Lost media is always something that's interested me. There's something fascinating about the idea of content that existed in one form or another and now doesn't exist, or at the very least isn't accessible by any means. And today, I want to share with you some lost media related to religion. Some of these are ancient texts while others are modern creations that center around religious topics. I tried to include a fair amount of variety in this list. Side note, this is not at all supposed to be a discussion about which religion is true and which ones are false. Judging from my channel name and my other videos, it's pretty easy to tell which religion I follow. But today is just purely an examination of historical artifacts related to various religions. Also, pretty much all the items on this list are connected to Christianity in some way. I'm not really super familiar with other world religions, so if there are other pieces of lost religious content from other world religions, be sure to mention them in the comments and I might try to include some of them in volume 2. But with all this out of the way, let's go ahead and look at some of the most interesting lost religious media. Papias of Hierapolis was a bishop who lived during the time of the Apostles. He was a follower of Polycarp, who was a disciple of John the Apostle, and it's even said that Papias heard St. John preach. During his life, he wrote a five-volume work titled The Expositions of the Sayings of the Lord. It's said that he created this work simply by interviewing people who knew the Apostles. Only fragments of this work survive today. There are no known copies of any of the volumes, we only have a small amount of his writings that survive through quotations, and the quotes we have show that his work must have been pretty strange. For example, when recounting the death of Judas, he says that he didn't actually die by hanging. He says that the rope had broken and he continued to live a painful and miserable life. He was so fat that his eyes swelled shut and he couldn't even pass through doorways that even wagons could fit through. It gets even crazier than that, but honestly it's really disgusting, so I'll leave it to you guys to look it up on your own if you want to. Another thing that's notable is that his writings still existed during the late Middle Ages. That means that his writings were preserved for well over a thousand years before disappearing. And if his writings had been saved for just one or two more generations, then they could have been saved a lot easier with the printing press. The Gospels, according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are what are called the Synoptic Gospels. They're grouped together because they all share a great deal of commonality, even being the same word for word at times. The word Synoptic means seeing together. There are several different theories for why they share so much commonality between them, and one theory is that Mark was written and then another source called the Q source, then Matthew and Luke borrowed from Mark and Q to write their Gospels. The existence of the Q source is not confirmed to definitely exist. It's a theory proposed by academics. Some scholars treat it as merely a hypothesis, while others treat its existence as almost an unquestionable dogmatic fact. Personally, as a theology student, I don't currently have an opinion on whether or not the Q source exists. I know that I'll eventually have to investigate this topic a lot more in my field of study, but as it stands currently, it seems possible that it exists, but there's no hard evidence that proves it, and honestly, I lean a little bit more towards saying it doesn't exist. I included it in this list because I would have felt strange making a video about lost religious media and not even mentioning the Q source. After the time of the Apostles, there were many false gospel accounts that were written and circulated among various heretical sects. Some of these include the Gospel of Peter, the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Judas, and in this case, the Gospel of Mary. Most of these gospels contain strange teachings about Jesus and depicted events which were obviously fictitious and centered around supposedly secret knowledge that the rest of the Christian community didn't know. The Gospel of Mary is one of these false gospels. Some fragments of it have been recovered, yet about 10 pages worth of text is missing. The text that we do have recounts a conversation between Jesus and his apostles. They ask him various questions about reality, and Jesus gives a very platonic explanation of these topics. It's all very strange, and it honestly seems nothing like the Jesus of the Bible. Eventually, Jesus finishes his discourse with the apostles, and he instructs them to spread the gospel. All the apostles begin crying, because they're scared about their mission, and they ask Mary Magdalene if she has any knowledge she can share with them. She begins recounting a vision she had received, but basically the entirety of this vision is lost. When the text resumes, she speaks of seven evil powers which afflict the soul that one has to overcome in order to escape the material world. After her explanation of these seven powers, some of the apostles say that they don't believe that this teaching actually came from Jesus. 
Levi, or Matthew, then rebukes them and says that if Jesus chose to make her worthy of these teachings, then they shouldn't reject her. So yeah, this text seems pretty crazy overall. Besides the obviously false depiction of Jesus, who doesn't seem to be interested in anything other than giving these long ramblings, affirming 2nd century Platonic ideas, and the obvious circular logic from Matthew, it's still interesting in its own sense. It's an interesting look into the environment of the early church. There were a lot of these groups that rose up, and a lot of them were obviously way off track. In hindsight, we can pretty easily see that this was obviously not an authentic account of the historical Jesus. But at the time, there were probably a lot of people who bought into these sorts of Gospels. It's an interesting anthropological look into the beliefs and practices of early Platonic Gnostic groups. This one might be a little controversial depending on how I present it, so I'm going to try my best to show both sides here. I don't mean any disrespect to any LDS viewers who might be watching. The veracity of the Book of Mormon and the legitimacy of Joseph Smith are totally conversations that should be had, but today, I just want to focus on an interesting piece of religious lost media. Again, no disrespect to my LDS viewers. With that being said, what is the Book of Lehi? The Book of Lehi, also called the Lost 116 Pages, is a now lost section from Joseph Smith's first attempt at translating the Book of Mormon. For those of you who don't know, Joseph Smith is a man who lived in the 1800s and claimed to be a prophet sent to restore the church that Jesus had established. He claims that an angel led him to a set of golden plates which had written on them another account of Jesus, recounting the time that he had spent in the Americas. These golden plates were written in a language called Reformed Egyptian. Joseph Smith was able to translate these plates using a device called the Urim and Thummim, which were a pair of glasses that allowed him to see the text in English, and a seer stone which he placed in a hat. Joseph Smith had begun his translation with the help of a man named Martin Harris. Smith would read the text out loud in English, and Harris would write it down. Eventually, Harris started asking Joseph Smith if he could take the manuscript home to show his wife. Smith had asked God for permission several times, and he was denied each time. Eventually, he said that God allowed him to give permission, so Martin Harris took the manuscript home and he showed it to his wife and every single one of his friends, even though he had taken an oath to only show it to five specific people. The manuscript then went missing, and it's highly likely that Martin Harris's wife had something to do with it. After this incident, Joseph Smith had a supposed revelation from God that he didn't need to translate these 116 pages again. In this revelation, God said that these pages had fallen into the hands of evil men, and if Joseph Smith had tried to translate these pages again, the people who possessed the original manuscript would change parts of it in order to discredit him. But God said that the information contained in the pages he translated were also contained in the following sections of the Book of Mormon, so Joseph Smith should simply continue translating where he left off. There's a couple things I want to note. Yes, the story does seem suspicious to me as someone who's not LDS, but if I were LDS, this anecdote alone would not convince me that Joseph Smith is a false prophet. If Joseph Smith were a true prophet, then it's not unthinkable that God wanted to teach Joseph a lesson about trusting in him and accepting his decisions. So yeah, while I'm of course suspicious about this narrative, I don't think any LDS believers are being completely unreasonable if they don't see this as suspicious. Also, there's something interesting I came across while researching this. On YouTube, there's a channel that claims to have released the Lost 116 Pages. EXPLAIN YOURSELF ABOUT THE ORIGIN OF THIS BOOK! HELLO, CAN I ASK YOU A QUESTION? The description linked to a website for the organization which released the text. It claims to be the real Illuminati, and honestly this whole website is just freaking crazy. Just a weird side note to this entry. Hoo Hoo Studios was a movie production company created in 1966. They focused primarily on children's content, and they made a fair amount of movies. In 2009, they were supposed to release an animated children's movie about Noah's Ark. However, it got delayed several times throughout its production, and the last update that's been given was in 2013. Short sections of test animation have been released, and a trailer was also released by the studio in 2013, although they have since removed this trailer, so that too is also lost media now. Clips of the trailer still exist in an animation reel put together by one of the animators who worked on the project, so besides these short clips, the entirety of the movie is lost. And unfortunately, it'll probably stay that way. In 2022, Hoo Hoo Studios officially closed, and it's very unlikely that this film will ever be released. February of this year, the Catholic apologist Trent Horn debated atheism with Dr. Christopher Martin at the University of Toledo. For those of you who don't know, Trent Horn is a debate machine. He does a ridiculous 
ridiculous amount of debates. Sometimes it'll feel like as soon as you finish listening to his latest one, he's already done three more. And he kills it in pretty much every debate he does. In my opinion, he's easily one of the greatest debaters alive today, quite possibly the best. Shortly before the debate, his flight got cancelled due to bad weather, so the University of Toledo ended up having to do the debate with Dr. Christopher Martin in person and Trent Horn zooming in. I can only imagine what that looked like. Anyways, Trent Horn was the one who was supposed to be recording the debate on his computer, and he ran into some technical difficulties. Apparently, his computer kept restarting and he didn't know why. He stopped the recording and it worked normally again. So while it couldn't be recorded on his end, apparently someone in the audience is said to have recorded the audio of this debate. Currently, the whereabouts of this recording are unknown and it's not even confirmed to definitely exist. So there's a good chance that we'll never get to hear this debate. However, Trent Horn did do a debrief video shortly after the debate where he went through the general outline, the arguments given, and the overall beat for beat for the debate. In April of 2020, a post was made to the subreddit r slash obscure media where the original poster shows clips from a VHS they owned. The clips are heavily distorted but clearly show some sort of low budget children's show. They said it was from Columbus, Ohio and aired on public access television around 4.30 in the morning and they remembered it being from the 90s. Not knowing the actual name, the original poster called the show Pink Morning Cartoon. Due to the heavy distortion on the footage and the audio, many people thought the show seemed creepy and unnerving. Because of this, many people concluded that the whole thing was some sort of lost media hoax. But eventually, those who were interested in finding the source of this cartoon found similarities between the clips shown and the description of a show on the TV station WINJLP. The name of this show was called Kids Fun Festival. It was developed almost entirely by a woman named Ella Flowers. She was a pastor at her church, and she made countless religious cartoons for children, this being one of them. Eventually, investigators were able to get in contact with Ella Flower's daughter and granddaughter. They said that she used to have shelves full of these tapes before she died, but unfortunately, the tapes with her other animations were stolen by a relative, and he either sold or destroyed them. So it's unknown whether or not any more of these tapes will resurface at any point. It seems unlikely, but not entirely hopeless. And I just have to say, I honestly hope that more of these animations resurface someday. I don't know what it is, but whenever I see something that's low budget, in a lot of cases, it makes me think that the creators made it because they actually wanted to, not because they were obligated or wanted to make money. They just have a charm to them that I don't see in those large big budget studio productions. This one is going to make some people upset, but I'm still going to count it as lost media. This is going to require a fair amount of background information. Basically, in 1917, in a small town in Portugal called Fatima, the Virgin Mary appeared to three shepherd children. During these visits, she gave the children a series of three secrets, which were later revealed. The first secret was a vision of hell. The second secret was a warning of World War II and a call for repentance. And the third secret has not been released in its entirety. See, Sister Lucia, the only one of the three children at Fatima who lived past childhood, said that the secret was supposed to be released in 1960 or at her death, whichever came first. 1960 came and the church said that they weren't going to release it. Eventually, it was released by the church in 2000. But there is no way that what they released was actually the full third secret. What they released was a vision of a pope walking in a wasteland of bodies before being shot. First of all, when explaining why they wouldn't release the third secret in 1960, they specifically mentioned the words that the children heard. The version they released in 2000 had zero words. So why on earth would they mention the words that the children heard? Also, the other two secrets have a clear structure. Mary shows the children a vision and then explains it. The vision is part A and the explanation is part B. So we have 1A and 1B, 2A and 2B, and 3A. So where's 3B? Vision 3 is easily the most mysterious of all three of them, so why would the explanation be missing? Also, several high-up clerics in the church read the third secret before it was released in 2000, and they all said it was about an apostasy in the church. The version we got says nothing about an apostasy in the church. There are tons of other reasons to believe that the third secret has not been released in its entirety, so I highly recommend you research this more. There's a lot of speculation, and some people go off the rails with their theorizing, but it definitely warrants an investigation. I'll link to Timothy Gordon's podcast episode on this topic in the description. He does an incredibly effective explanation of the information, and he gives a great starting point for further research. 
That's all I have for you guys today. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more religious topics. I definitely want to make a part two sometime soon, and I have tons of other great projects in the works. So I'll see you all in the next video, and until then, God bless you all.